Welcome to the Porsche Club Insider, your one stop for all things Porsche and PCA. Here's your host, Vu Gwynn, and the Insider Crew. Welcome, everyone. Episode 25. This one's going to be, you know, hey, remember back in the day when you would go to a record store and they have, you'd buy a single, but then there's also like an extended play version? I think today is going to be just that. I think we're going to go over our normal 60-minute uh, run just because there's so much to report back from from Monterey Car Week. I think you aged yourself. <laughs> I was going to say, why did you say that? <laughs> it's okay. I'm proud. LPs are back. Um, but uh, here we are with uh, Manny Alban, PCA's technical director. Rob Sass is calling in from Michigan. We have Damon Lowney, our digital media coordinator. And thank you to Robert for all the behind the scenes work. Before we get started, I want to make sure I thank Cobra 6. Cobra 6 left us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and uh, definitely gets the gist of our, our podcast. It's, uh, I think he said it was like sitting at the, at, uh, amongst friends at a, at a car show, and that's, that really is what it's all about. Uh, no, no particular special guest today, but uh, we wanted to report back on all the different things that we saw in Monterey, did in Monterey, drove in Monterey. Where do we start, Manny? It was one whirl, whirlwind week. It was uh, morning to, to clo night. It was uh, something going on all the time, and uh, we almost had we did divide and conquer the different events. Uh, so yeah, as I started going over how much we have to cover, I realized this is going to be longer than an hour. Yeah, and Unless, this it's not even over yet. You know, we arrived at what midnight on Tuesday. We've been working on the podcast to prepare, and now here we are. Just keep on going. Yeah, I mean. Rob and I probably had the longest run at Monterey. We arrived on Tuesday for the classic uh, motorsports Monterey kickoff, and he and I got to judge, surprise, surprise, the German cars, uh, more specifically the Porsches and the Volkswagens. So, so, Rob? We photos? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys were waiting for photos. You no. Yeah. yeah, no, that was great fun. That was a first year show i believe right vu um and uh tim suttered and his crew from uh classic motorsports magazine uh did a really nice job uh launching that it was a lot of fun yeah it was pretty cool a lot of uh you know what's interesting is people always are surprised that uh those of us here at HQ and in the club that we like other cars surprise surprise we do we love a lot of other cars as a matter of fact and so you know seeing some of the muscle cars the Italian cars the British cars they had a little bit of everything they didn't have a whole lot in each category but uh, there were some definitely some quality cars uh, yeah, like that. We there's some photos yeah. for those of you that are watching on YouTube. A uh, lowered Cadillac, um, an Alfa, Alfa Romeo. Romeo. They they had you, a lot of cool stuff. You should speak for yourself though, because Manny hates other cars. <laughs> That's not true. They make me <laughs> like BMW. They make me appreciate Porsche all the more. I there mean, they're go. beautiful cars like that at Aston, but I would get in that 356 and drive cross country. I don't know if the Aston's going to make it without me uh, having a mechanic nearby. True that, true that. And to talk about uh, reliability, the, uh, the, the blue 356 there, the, the Rod Emery, the car that Rob and I chose as, as the Porsche best of show, um, that, that vehicle was driven, I believe, from Phoenix. L.A. I think he's he, – no, he was from Phoenix, but he, didn't, he towed it part of the way. Right, yeah, And then he right drove there. it to, from Southern California, I think up up to the event so and he said it cruised along and was just fine that's the reliability of those cars so uh normally people who've gone to a monterey car week know that uh tuesdays were uh concours in the avenue mm -hmm. uh, where they did the uh concours on the streets of carmel uh, unfortunately the organizer passed away doug mm -hmm. and uh I, I i rob you mentioned that uh carmel's not interested in car shows anymore so that's probably I why you know picked up on the, it. Yeah, that the the residents and the the city fathers of Carmel were not all that wild about um, closing down Ocean Avenue and and uh, you know all the logistics that went along with with having that show there on Tuesday. Even though you know people went and they they absolutely 
swarmed all the the restaurants and shops and everything else it seemed like a good thing for for carmel to me but i think uh some of the residents disagreed um we should also give a shout out though to andy reed who's the chief judge of the show that we uh you and i judged vu and pacific grove on tuesday he also did a wonderful job herding cats i got an awesome judge's gift i don't think everyone got a judge's gift i think this was more of a friend gift because after the show he's like oh i got something for you i got something for you i'm like what is it he's like i got, I got a present and so he pulled out a limited edition fox body mustang hot wheels and this was after the show after the show okay. it was so cool uh so thank nice. you to andy i will cherish it for sure Did you already modify it it's our <laughs> it, it was a modified car from hot wheels yeah yeah so so that was pretty much our tuesday and then uh wednesday was uh was quite a blur because we had a lot of meetings but we had to adjust but what we really wanted to do was to kind of get in and get some previews of things well before that uh that's when the crew you yes. came in early the crew got in on wednesday uh around noon the pca crew damon rented a car we rented about three or four cars uh, so I went with Damon, and we've got this stellar example of this Dodge Caravan. And uh, I, I was just shocked because, uh, you know, I'm playing the navigator. So I'm like, all right, I'll hook up a CarPlay. We can uh, get the navigation down. And uh, I'm not sure what year this uh, Caravan was. I didn't look was. what year. It had to have been like a 2013 or 2014 Dodge Caravan. I turn on the screen to try to uh, see if it has CarPlay. Uh, this thing didn't even have windows based. Uh, it looked like DOS. Yeah, forty seven thousand miles. That <laughs> that thing's been in the fleet for a while. But that that was not the best feature of your van. Your best f- feature of your van was the fact that it had two different license plates. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> in fact, it was. Uh, and we didn't notice until no, like two days later. Someone else who pointed it out to us, and it, they weren't even the same color. The uh, Tennessee plate was dark. The Texas plate in front was white. And it had expired Texas registration on the windshield. So I think the the Texas plate, they forgot to uh, take it off. So we weren't sure we wanted to rob a bank or what would happen if we got pulled over because we had this uh, dual personality uh, caravan. So that was our start to uh, uh, to Monterey Week with this wonderful example of a caravan. My wife asked me, she said, was that the only car there? Is that why you picked a caravan? And I said, no, Damon thought he was going to hang out the back for photography reasons. So. He prefers uh, prefers to hang out of minivans rather than SUVs. Well, on the flip side, there were there weren't many cars when I landed. They just gave me a key when I checked in, and they gave me a key to a pretty cool looking Q5. That is the that is the lamest story of how you got an Audi. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. You got to drive the Macan's little brother, right? Yeah, the Macan's little brother, and actually it was it was, it was quite choice. I didn't mind it. <laughs> He just gave me the keys to this McLaren. And I at, had no the choice. <laughs> I would prefer a so, Toyota. So from there, from, from there uh, the idea was to meet over at the Zentrum and record a preview of the Zentrum for all those that weren't going to make it out to Marnery Car Week. Now, that was the plan. That isn't exactly what happened, but Damon did produce a great video, um, which made it look like the plan went, went as, as we uh, expected. Yeah, we um, were. I went to film on Thursday, I believe it was. Uh, we filmed the interview on Wednesday, then I went to film B roll on Thursday, then released it on Friday because you know Friday is when people can show up, and Saturday is when the GT3 RS was going to be there. So we wanted to have the video up, and uh, hopefully somebody saw it and learned what a Zentrum was and uh, where it was, and could benefit and go see the GT3 RS. But the yeah. cool thing was actually when we got there. You know, we plan things, and uh, obviously sometimes things don't go the way we had planned them. Uh, but it's good to have a plan. Uh, anyways, when we got to the Zentrum, and so the Zentrum is located in, uh, I guess, Monterey, downtown Monterey, mm-hmm. uh, which usually was uh, set up in at the Quail, which was a golf course, and it was a man-made uh, uh, temporary building. So this was inside what they call the Barnes at Molera. Yep. Um, I'm not sure what they do, but it's flanked by two coffee shops or a bakery and a coffee shop. And uh, uh, parking is a little bit tough because it's on the street and it's controlled by uh, so many hours you can park there. Uh, but it's definitely a, a much nicer vibe. I, I like the vibe a lot better because um, you can literally come up the street and go inside the uh, Zentrum. But when we got there, um, they were bringing cars in. And 
the people who wonder how these cars uh, get there or get on stage, we got a close look of them. Uh, there was like a uh, two posts that would block people from driving in, so they had to make a temporary ramp to drive over these uh, posts. And one of them, both the cars were rare cars. One was a 9083, um, and the other one was a, um, they were both uh, Jerry Seinfeld's cars. The other one was a 718 Spider commissioned as an homage to the, uh, to the uh, 9083. But it was pretty neat seeing uh, behind the scenes how much they stress and worry about bringing these cars over um, this seemingly innocuous hump, but it was enough to damage the car if they didn't do it properly. Well, I, I agree with you for the um, last year they did it at the same location, but prior to that, what they used to do was they used to convert a tennis court uh, over at the quail and they had to sort of build their own building. And it was it was cool, but it was, uh, I would say, much smaller of a footprint and parking was even worse there, parking over at the quail. Uh, this this facility here, I, I think what it normally is, is like a place where you have weddings or it's like a special events um, sort of uh, area. Uh, and and so it, it's our already kind of quaint and beautiful with flowers, the neat barn and the little garden. And then Porsche just kind of takes it to the next step and places little bits of you know Porsche art and cars and they, they put in a stage, but I think it's definitely a better venue. And also, yes, the parking was along the street, but overall, I think there's more parking than there was when it was yeah, over I at didn't the quail. Have trouble finding parking. It yeah, you just, just had to drive to around a couple and, bit. Yeah. Yep. But the, uh, I can only imagine what this must cost Porsche because the, every time we went over there, they had uh, free, free drinks. Yeah. And uh, even the snacks. And they weren't looking for a ticket or you just, people nope. just walked right on in from the street. Um, obviously, it wasn't a big billboard that advertised what it was. You had to know that the Zentrum was there, but that couldn't have been cheap. Yeah, yeah. But it is cool. I, I think Friday night was a little bit more exclusive. That's when they first unveiled the GT3 RS at the Zentrum. But like you said, Saturday morning, they open, opened up the doors for just the general public. If you had an interest, you could walk through and you had pretty much the same experience of the people of the night before. Pretty awesome. So, so yeah, so Thursday or, or rather Wednesday, uh, um, we got some footage and, and uh, you got the main interview with um, uh, with Porsche about the Zentrum. With Jessica. Jessica did yep. a great job. Yep. I think that was her, her first take. Time. Uh, one we one take, and I think that was her first time with us uh, on video. So yeah, I believe so. Kudos to her. Yeah. So while we were wrapping that up, there was a photo shoot. I don't know if I sent a photo of that. A photo shoot of the classic Club Coupe, as well as the original Sport Classic and the 992 Sport Classic. Now, <laughs> I chuckle a little bit because when I was made aware of this photo shoot going on and they invited us, I thought it was purely... Um, you know, we're doing this thing for archives, and if you guys want to come check it out, do so. Okay, sounds cool. That's you know, we don't have anything particularly planned. And um, I was supposed to be there at five, and you know, we're hanging out at the Zentrum to like what five fifteen or so, and then we thought we would just casually move over. But then Porsche Classic calls and like, where are you? I'm like, we're on our way. And uh, turns out they were waiting for us uh, so that they could take photos of us with the car. So I felt like I was rolling in as this like uh, this uh, this model that's that's fashionably late. But uh, we got it done. But the we funniest see. part was uh, you were in your car. Damon and I are in the uh, wonderful Dodge Caravan. Damon puts the address in. We get up to this <laughs> driveway. It's a closed driveway with a gate and little speaker so he hits the speaker and he says yeah we're here for the photo shoot and you can hear like a pause and uh. was like there's no photo shoot damon was like well this is with porsche and he's explaining and the guy you could hear the guy say is there a photo shoot today and uh he comes back and he says the photo shoot's not till tomorrow and it's gunther works and gunther works and <laughs> And we realized we're at the wrong place. You looked at your text message, wrong address. You yes, took the first I did. Address. We and were going to shoot the look of sheer panic on Damon's face because it's, uh, you know, in Monterey, it's not the distance, it's the traffic. Yeah. You could be two miles away, but it may take you a half hour. Luckily, it oh, was yeah, just down it the street. Yep. And uh, 
luckily it was only a two minute drive to this beautiful house mm -hmm. that uh, the guy was telling us how he restored it. Uh, just a few years it took him, but it was like completely gutted. He said, I think the floor on the second floor was the only thing they were able to use. Everything else they had to redo. It's right across the street from the Quail. It's a beautiful house. Yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, there we had all the inspired cars there. So the original Sport Classic, the Classic Club Coupe, and then the uh, the new Sport Classic. And you really see the difference in colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was cool to it was see them all neat, together. Uh, so from there, we. Uh, Kind of wrapped up Wednesday. I don't even remember what we did for dinner Wednesday. I Baja just... Cantina. Oh, Baja oh, Cantina. That's right. We met the, uh, yeah. the guys Princess from Princess Cruises. Cruises. Princess Cruises. Baja Cantina. I think we should tell our listeners, if for those that haven't been to Monterey, Baja Cantina is quite a tradition. It's a staple. It's a staple, yeah. right? So, but you got to get there like on a Wednesday or Thursday because after that, it's almost impossible to get in. Yeah, if but you want to wait in the line, yeah. go there on Friday. Amazing, amazing, amazing Mexican food, but then also um, the parking lot. It's cool. There's a mm -hmm. you know everybody brings their cars and it's a it's an impromptu car show in itself. Yeah, you should see it after the quail. It's literally just down Carmel Valley Road from where the quail is, and right mm -hmm. after that, the parking lot is you know peak parking lot. Yeah, and it was a beautiful evening too. Yeah. It was a nice way to wrap up the day. So moving into Thursday, Thursday was pretty much works setup day, and uh, we were at a new location this year, Monterey Pines Golf Course. Uh, thankfully, when it's arrived, uh, for those that are watching on YouTube, sorry about the fuzzy photos. It's, uh, I think I, I reduced the quality so it could go, could go across email. But anyways, um, the, the best part about arriving to Monterey Pines this year was the fact that our pod, all of our shipments, everything made it. Because last year, it was the exact <laughs> opposite. Our shipment was somewhere on a train, and we had to go purchase everything. Yeah. And so we unloaded the pod and we just kind of, I mean, setup went really well. I think the only snafu was the tent uh, provider. They came a little late, but, you know, it was just, it was, it was pretty smooth. Yeah, I think for uh, Melanie, who we had on the podcast last week, uh, it's her first Monterey Works Reunion. And she did a phenomenal job of uh, yes. looking oh, yeah. at the details. Congrats and I saw her, uh, her word chart. She sent to us, and it stressed me out just reading this spreadsheet down to every minute of what's going on pre-event and during the event. Uh, but it paid off because, uh, you know, people that came just commented on how everything was so well organized. And, um, yeah, the, the setup is a lot of work, and there's a lot of us, mm -hmm. uh, our office staff and volunteers who put in long hours to, uh, you know, make it great for everyone who shows up on Friday. I think it's worth mentioning, too, that uh, getting to this, lo we love all the locations we've been to, but this one was a lot easier to get to. And I think I heard some of the vendors, they loved it, you know, unloading and loading. So overall, much easier this year, I think. Yeah, the setup probably the, the, the highlight of the setup was um, putting the Huna Pegasus in place. Yeah, that was cool. That was <laughs> cool. Yeah, we've got a video where the uh, the back gate of the trailer comes down and you don't realize how low this thing until you have to move it onto something they had a a collection of wood uh planks to to get it out of the trailer but then we had to kind of push it around the stage and um, you guys know the the there's like these speed bump things that you can run cables through well actually the speed bump is not very high but it was too high for the huna pegasus where we had to actually take the cable out of the speed bump and just let it roll over the cable. And um, that worked, but man, that thing is a beast. And it's low, it's wide. And I think we had uh, our marketing director, Jim, lay next to the spoiler because they oh, took yeah, it yeah. off. I think there's a photo yeah. of the spoiler is taller than Jim, and I believe Jim's 6'4". Six, 6'4". Four. Six, yeah. Four. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so oh it's my like gosh. A, there it is. Yeah, it's like a seven-foot wing. There oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I, asked him, I, asked him, I asked him to lie down next to it because it, it was really no sense of the size just by itself. So we needed somebody to. <laughs> yeah, he's 6'4", I believe. Yeah, so that's a seven-foot span wing. And it, it, I think uh, in the trailer, it only had like an inch to spare on either side yeah. of the wing. There's yeah. the, uh, so when they, when they delivered it, they had the wing off just to make life easier for them. Is that the uh, touring model? Yeah. <laughs> or aftermarket? So the neat no thing on, on, on Thursdays is uh, the, as the cars are trickling in, the cars that are coming in to stay uh, the overnight, um, you can really 
pay more attention because on Friday there are so many cars and it's like being dropped in the middle of Disneyland. You don't know what to look at first. But on Thursday, the cars start to trickle in little by little, so you get to spend more time admiring the cars, talking to the owners before, uh, you know, all hell breaks loose on Friday. So yeah, we got to do some fun was, things. We didn't was, have to set up quite as much I was about as to say, past. setup was Manny going so well that we were confident that Manny and Damon would have time to do some one-mile reviews. And uh, I think you guys, what, snuck in two? Yeah, we got two in, which was probably good. It actually, the timing, I don't know if we could have done a third on Thursday. But we drove two very special cars um, that if you've been to Works or Porsche Parade or other Porsche events in California or Florida, I guess, is where Kelly lives. Uh, Kelly Telfer's Bahama Mama, which is what you see on the screen now, um, which is a 68 911 that was owned by the Brumos collection for a very long time, and Manny drove that one. Yeah, the, uh, the story is Kelly was walking, being given a tour of the Brumos collection before they moved to the new building, and uh, he asked them, do you sell anything here? Is anything for sale? And they said, no, nothing's for sale. But he came across this uh, 911L, and he says, boy, this is, I would love to own this, and the guy said something to the Something along the lines of, uh, well, this, if we were going to sell one, this would probably be the one we would sell. And before you know it, Kelly's now the owner of this uh, very low mileage uh, 6911. And the 68s are um, easy to spot because they have these square reflectors on the fenders and the rear flares. That was the only year they did it in the U.S. So it's an easy spot. This car even had the original smog pump. It wasn't hooked up, but it was still mounted in the same place. Mm. So it was... Uh, it's a very cool drive, um, totally. And I was thinking about this for anyone who uh, you know wants to own an air cooled 911. Here was two air cooled 911s that we drove that couldn't have been any more different and feel. You know, from uh, uh, John D'Angelo's uh, 993 Cabriolet to this car. This had a really big, almost bus-like steering wheel. Uh, it only had 130 horsepower, so you were flat out more than you weren't. And it was. Uh, um, uh, a 901 transmission so dog leg to the left it was a lot of fun uh, but a whole different feeling that what uh what yeah. um i wish i could have driven it. it kelly wanted me to drive it but we just didn't have the time uh, if we wanted to make our, our yeah, next it was, appointment uh, which was this Damon car drove. yeah the yeah. kermit this is kermit yeah so this is uh member john d'angelo's 1997 carrera 4 cabriolet and i think it's about 30,000 miles, maybe a little bit less. And it's just a, it's a great car, a great condition. Incredible sound. What kind of yeah. exhaust did he have? Uh, on he it? has a Fister modified exhaust, so it's a bit louder. It's lowered on Bilstein PSS 10s, and it has Turbo S tie rods, or tie rods, uh, anti roll bars. Um, and I think a couple other things that I'm not remembering off the top of my head, but basically the car drives really really well and i haven't driven a 993 for a long time but it has that same fluidity and of one piece solid feel that new porsches and old porsches have which is a lot to say considering mm -hmm. it's a cabriolet yep yeah it was a very tight car yeah i think i drove it from the um works reunion to our our um Site that yeah, we, to our site. Yeah, yeah, I told Damon, I said, you're going to love this. This thing is uh, incredible. I was surprised. I thought it would feel older than it is, and it actually felt newer um, and perhaps more solid some of than, than some of Porsche's uh, late 90s, early 2000s cars. What's the official name of his the green? That's Conda Green. Conda Green? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to take a little credit because he was considering – waiting in line for a newer car versus getting that car when it came available. And I said, you already have, at the time he had the Club Coupe, and then I think he had the- You have a GT4? Huh? Didn't he have a GT4 for a while? Uh, I thought think, he did. I think he did have a GT4. Mm -hmm. And uh, I forget what he was considering to buy or waiting in line to buy, and I said, you should get this 993. I mean, the color alone, and then um, yeah, it's, it was just in sweet condition. And I think the owner that he purchased it from was quite a fanatic. And I said, cars like that don't come by very often. And he jumped on. I'm glad he did because it does give like a nice balance to his quote-unquote collection. Mm -hmm. Actually, the guy who uh, 
was handling Kelly's car. He's the one who pointed out that we had two different license plates on the. Uh, yeah. No, oh, really? The, <laughs> that's funny. Minivan. I was busy filming, and yeah, he just. Did and I you think know? Kelly also brought a a Honda like little scooter that matched same color. Oh, yeah, he model. did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the pink pig. And the big, the, the, pink the rodeo pig. style, <laughs> whatever. So the pink pig, it's actually a huge pig. Uh, what do they call those things? Um, it's a prop from a the, prop. Yeah. It, it's a prop from the movies in the eighties, I want to say, from Porky's. Yep. Um, for those of you that were a teenager in the eighties, and you probably remember the movie Porky's. And I I'll have no clue what Porky's is. Oh my gosh! It, I'll just <laughs> you're not missing a whole lot. Okay. It's good. so silly and yeah, but um, anyways. So then we, where did we have dinner Thursday night? I don't even remember what we did for dinner. It's such a blur. Where did we go? We tried to, oh, we did something quick. Oh, you know, we, we ate at, um, we ate the, at the Provasi's house. Oh, that's right. We ate at the Provasi's house. And the whole idea is, you know, we want to get to bed early Thursday night because we got to wake up at 4 a.m. on Friday to, you know, be at the, um, be at the Marty Pines golf course by 6 a.m. And wouldn't you believe it, we roll up in the dark at 6 a.m. and there's at least a dozen PCA members already staged to come in. It was crazy. Yeah, we actually used the uh, headlights of the rental cars to help set up. And that's been a long time tradition. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, it's, and people uh, don't believe it, but yeah, there's people waiting. When we get there, they're already waiting in line to we can't even see where the markers say to where to park them, but they're waiting in line to be uh, to be parked. Well, they know if you if you wait later, you'll be waiting a little bit longer just yeah. due to the traffic coming into the event. Yeah. So yeah. seven o'clock rolls around. That officially opens the gates, and the cars start rolling in. And at this point, you know, I I'm basically um, on stage and kind of you know that's that's my post for the day. And I'm watching everything come in, and it's pretty, you know, that's where the nerves kind of kick in because um, what you're, what we're wondering is whether or not uh, we've handled and managed the traffic flow, and are we getting people in on time? And, you know, I'm not seeing backups on the, the side roads, which is good, but it was a steady, steady flow. Um, and this was probably the largest works reunion. Ever and the photos for those of you that are watching on YouTube, you can see that there were times where it was shoulder to shoulder along the uh, the fairways, and it was just I did. There was there's 600 cars or so in the corral, 165 on the judge fairways, and um, you know I could only see it from afar. But what was it like? These for are you pretty guys early walking morning through? photos. What's that? What was it like for you guys walking through later in the day? Oh, I think the photos right crowded. now are, are are from the early morning. There wasn't a place where there wasn't loads of people. It yeah. was just uh, really packed. Uh, even from the corral, um, I think the layout was probably the best layout we've had in any works uh, because the corral people weren't in an area all by themselves. Uh, in order to go to the food trucks, you had to go through the corral yeah. or alongside the corral. Um, so I think everyone was getting love and um you know, it was, you could just tell people were having a good time, just hanging out. And so I didn't have to walk as far to see everything. Yeah, it was pretty centralized and it was flat. Um, and I didn't want to make this comment during the event, but now that it's over, I, for the first time since COVID, like this really felt like a normal event. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, yeah, I guess so. Uh, you know, it's uh, we joked that this was gonna, you know. If you were in a cluster of people, that this was probably a COVID central. If you, if someone had COVID, it was going to be. But you know, I guess uh, we were outside, and yep. uh, everyone just the, everyone's spirits were. They were just so happy. Um, so many people, and thank you for all of you that came up to the stage to thank us for, you know, the event and things that we've been doing. Um, I know. was surprised how many people came up to say. Uh, they like to not. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but they came out to say they listen to the podcast or watch the podcast. I'm always surprised. I'm always surprised because it's it's very cool when it you know people say how listening to the podcast helps them when they're walking their dog, mowing the lawn, or working on their cars. That's cool. That's the yeah. whole reason why we're doing so, it. Somebody finally recognized me from a YouTube video. So oh yeah. Oh, there you go. 
Well, Damon also Damon talked. also walks around with the I'm on YouTube sign. <laughs> Yeah, right. He also the guy behind Pat- the camera. He thought he saw Patrick Dempsey at the Zentrum oh, oh, on Wednesday. It was really? a lookalike for sure. It was a fat Could have Patrick been a stunt Dempsey. double. You know who was at Car- Monterey Car Week? Uh, Brad Pitt. Oh, really? Brad Pitt was. He was over at the... Um, I just watched Seven Years in Tibet the other night. There you, you go. You get excited about that, but not Jeff Gordon driving in the Carrera Cup. You mean at Sports Car Together Fest? Yes. I didn't say I wasn't excited. I was just... What's Brad Pitt done? He's in a lot of movies. He's getting divorced. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be paying child support. All right, fine. Why you got to make fun of me? Well, he just quit cigarettes, so there's yeah. a good one there. So works reunion. Rob, what was your uh, – actually, let's, let's, we, we had a question uh, from Alan Hall. I had posted a question, um, you know, what would you guys like for us to talk about on the podcast post Monterey Car Week? And they said, what was the most unique Porsche that you guys saw? So I think we have them in order. I think the first car is Manny's, the 916. Oh. Oh. Yes, so I was walking through the, uh, you know, the field uh, at the uh, Worst Reunion, and I and I'm particular to the 914 since I have one. So I was looking. That at one's the, the 356, Robert. The 916 is the steel no, one. It's with a, a silver one bumper. with the orange. Uh, it. I looked at it, and uh, this car is often replicated. Um, I think they made 11 of them. Uh, the yeah, there are 11 prototypes running yeah. around. So the 916 was a um, the final iteration of the 914. It was a uh, car that they never sold because they realized it was going to be priced out of the market, that it was going to be a uh, car as expensive or more expensive than a 911S. But it was um, a wide-body, uh, fixed roof. So 914s usually had removable roofs. This was fixed, 911S engine. Um, you... Without a doubt, the rarest car uh, at the event. Um, I thought the uh, lightweight was rare, but this was even rarer. And my first thought was this was a uh, tribute car replica, but no, it was a real thing. And unfortunately, I think a lot of you just walked by it and thought it was a regular 914, but that was pretty cool to see a uh, real uh, 916. Yeah, and we'll pull that up in a we'll second. We'll pull that here. up in a second. I think uh, Robert gave us a preview of the other rare cars that we saw. But yeah, you're right. That car looks like a, maybe even looks sort of like an outlaw car, and people think, oh, it's a modified nine or nine fourteen six GT because yeah. it has the GT flares on it. But that when you looked at the roof, and I was pointing to showing people, I'm like, look, it's a solid roof. There's no uh, gap where the target top comes off. Yep. Yeah. See, that's how I think Porsche should have built the nine fourteen, or at least had the option because I I like Targas, I like Cabriolets, but I I like coupes. They're easier. You don't have to worry about leaks. You know, stiffer chassis and all that. Very good. Yeah, yeah. A gorgeous, so, yeah. gorgeous car. And wow. I think uh, it's Patrick Motorsports that brought that car. Yep. And every year they come to Works Reunion. They have won bring, so much. They have won so much yeah. at Works Reunion. They they really bring some. I think we we have examples. to go for a history of first place trophies. We should go to them because I think they've got one every year. Yep. With different cars they bring. Well done. Well done. Um. So I, we'll go to, I think that the C4 lightweight. That was uh, that was Damon's. Oh, so um, the, I actually white didn't car, Robert. pick that. Oh, <laughs> I was <laughs> that was saying rare. that that was a unique car that was there. But that is one of my favorite cars, and it Man, was super unique. One of twenty car. or twenty-one, I think, Manny. Twenty-two, I think. Twenty-two. Um, if there's a factory nine eleven that's air cooled that I want and want to drive, it would be that one for sure. But I was gonna pick the easy car and say the, the most unique car that I like to see during Monterey Car Week that yeah. works 992 GT3 RS I'll the, pick the oh they're not oh yeah. yeah it is unique at this point they have haven't built that's any an easy except one. the prototypes that's a cop out <laughs> so my favorite was the seeing the 9083 Robert has a photo of that one there it goes now not only did we get to see it because we were there on Wednesday during setup we got to see it drive in and to hear that thing was mm-hmm. very special. And if you look at it, it's sitting next to the Boxster Spider and just look at the proportions. It is a tiny car compared mm-hmm. to a Boxster Spider. But look at look at the, uh, the the tires at the rear, the amount of grip and just the design. It's oh, it's I it think so they're beautiful. 13 inch diameter uh, wheels. Rims. Yeah. Yeah. Look how wide they are. Oh. So 13 cool. by 13 or something. <laughs> but Manny, cool thing while, while we were watching that, Manny, you got to talk to someone 
that's very close to yeah he handles the collection cars. sam Royalty and cars. uh we started talking about the car and this is the car so the livery that it was shown in with the two arrows the most famous uh livery of 908s it was only in that livery for two weeks and mm-hmm. then they redid it in, in martini livery which i didn't know mm-hmm. um but it won the 1970 targa florio and uh the stories are just incredible um at one point it raced i think the targa florio and um gerard larousse was driving it hopefully i get the story right he uh either breaks an axle or a wheel or something skids out of control literally skids into a wedding going on because this is through the streets of uh you know the city and um being the uh outgoing Frenchman that he is, he gets invited to the wedding. Uh, so they bring him in, they drag the car in. Porsche, meanwhile, is looking for the car. They're going around the whole island looking for this uh, their race car. They can't find him or the driver. And meanwhile, he's partying at the wedding. Well, one thing was. I noticed when looking at that car is, you know, today we, we have halos on cars. We have all sorts of safety. I mean, really, there's just that one triangle behind the driver, and it's lower than the driver's head. And, and you know what it says on the triangle? <laughs> what does it say? It says, don't push. Oh, really? So, so is it too weak to push the triangle? Therefore, really? if you flipped, would it actually yeah, do anything? Yeah, look, his head is way higher than the triangle. Yeah, when they were, when they oh were setting gosh. it in position, they were grabbing the rear of the, uh, yeah. of the frame, which is oh. all aluminum. And uh, they decided not to do that because uh, four men pulling it could bend. Oh, That's wow. how... Uh, how fragile the uh, frame is and i think your feet are sitting over the steering box oh I mean, yeah there is mm-hmm. yeah. there is very little concern for the driver about yeah. that car so after a works reunion um we went over to the zentrum again I don't think we picked rob's favorite car either. oh rob what was your favorite uh, works uh one of the first cars that you saw when you walked in the silver rose uh 959 Oh, oh, yeah, oh, wait, wait, oh, okay, wait. It, you so, said your, it so your favorite, favorite car, car at Monterey. So what about oh, Monterey? This? It was the uh, the nine hundred four that uh, the Audrain uh, collection brought. The ex uh, Nick Begovich car that we featured in the magazine and that uh, Don Osborne did a video with us uh, called Mona Lisa Porsche. I think this car has like eighteen hundred original miles on it. Uh, beautiful, absolutely incredible. Won the uh, post war preservation class at uh, Pebble Beach. Gorgeous car. Very nice. So we wrapped up works, cleared out the fairways, uh, also in record time, and uh, we didn't have to tow any cars off the field, which was a good thing. The last thing we loaded up was the Huna Pegasus, which yeah, I, was... I'm laughing because around 4 o'clock, I guess, I stopped by our uh, our uh, apparel tent where we sell yeah. the merchandise for Works Reunion, and our office staff... Uh, uh, the three C's, Charlotte, Charlene, and Chrissy, were working it, and uh, obviously they have worked it. Because someone came up to me and said, the only thing that would make this event better is if it was two or three days long. <laughs> and I laughed, and I said, well, for our office staff and our volunteers, this is already day three. Yeah. And he would go, oh, I didn't realize that. I'm like, yeah, I said, they're pretty tired. So when I went stop by to see them, they were, uh, they were pretty tired because, you know, you get there at, I think we left the hotel at 5 or 4.30, mm-hmm. something like that. Five, yeah. And uh, and they did a great job of inventory. They were sold out, mm-hmm. you know. And still, you had people coming in saying, "Why did Why did you sell out? No one, somebody did, didn't do their inventory correct." And I'm thinking to myself, there is like literally one hour left in this show. Yes, the fact we don't have inventory tells it's me perfect. whoever ordered inventory, which is Charlotte, did yeah. a phenomenal job because we sold out of the event shirts. Yeah, we don't want to go back with anything. I mean, if we go back with ten shirts, it really does kill the, the the margins and such so uh, but this is a perfect time to thank all the volunteers and i personally want to thank all the staff uh, at pca we are already starting to plan for next year and um, so many puzzle pieces come together and for us to go to a new location this year and i really believe you all knocked it out of the park so yeah, thank, there's you, so many thank you to all thanks of you. volunteers that work behind the scenes like uh, just the signage uh, and you don't appreciate it uh, because you see the signs and you know where to go. But uh, Tom Brown uh, from San Diego region, he spends months planning oh, yeah. this in advance, making sure he gets printed, laying them out, and putting them out. You know, I saw him early in the morning and then late Tom's on Friday. Tom's sign master. Yeah. Yes, we is. can just give him the signs and he knows where they go. And yeah. it looks easy to do, but <laughs> yeah. to be able no. to 
be that organized to count how many signs you need, the direction yeah. where you should put them so people see them. It's uh well, I know, I know he, he takes it sort of like the Disney approach mm -hmm. where, you know, when you think that the crowd might be standing somewhere for a bit long or driving, driving in a line and having an extra second or two to read something, he boom, mm -hmm. drops a sign so that it entertains you mm -hmm. while you're standing in line at the food, uh, food truck or if you're waiting to park. Um, so, yeah, they, they definitely do. When we are moving job. porta pots. <laughs> <laughs> on Thursday, I thought this the is glamorous, the glamorous. This is the, the kind of stuff shop. that uh, when you people, were moving port of pots. <laughs> was, uh, me and Connor and Melanie, uh, we had moved them once. That was practice, evidently. We had to move them again uh, further out so it wouldn't uh, be next to the vendors. Um, yeah, that's a uh, new skill we learned how to move port of pots. Yeah, and speaking of vendors, we had a record number of vendors at work. So we had thirty-one vendors we had obviously amazing offers um so what's interesting is that the this facility uh, other than pca because we're a nonprofit, our vendors were not able to sell and deliver merchandise on site um mm -hmm. but they were able to take orders and they could fulfill them and send it directly to to the purchasers and um there were some amazing deals out there i know like griots for example got like 20 gave 20 percent off on orders but then princess cruise lines they really stepped it up they've been doing so much with mm -hmm. us uh, at Parade and PCA in general, we gave away six cruises at Works Reunion. So that's six couples that are going to go on a cruise for free because of Princess Cruises. Um, people were so excited. They stayed. We did. We did one uh, pre, uh, one cruise offer or raffle um, that was just for those that stayed till the end, and we had probably the largest crowd for the award ceremony as they stayed and not only got to. Uh, watch all the the winning cars go by but then also was entered in uh and uh, i think it was a loma prieta maybe it was a loma prieta winner that uh, got the cruise but we had uh so we had uh the day goes by so fast on friday uh we had spike ferrison and zuckerman stop oh, yeah. by yeah yeah uh, in their uh each of their cars we parked them up front and zuckerman gave you don't listen to spike's car radio uh this, this may not seem uh you probably know what i'm talking about but um, they made a head sticker of Zuckerman to put on the uh, the car they raced at Pikes Peak, and everyone wanted these head stickers. So mm -hmm. he uh, brought a bunch to the uh, to work reunion, and they had a good time. Um, a lot of people that uh, we told, you know, if you need help with parking because you need to go in and out, let us know, and we'll get you some VIP parking. But later on, I found that they just came in, and the parking was so quick. They said they just went parked, and they didn't have to call us to, you know, give them VIP parking. Uh, negative. <laughs> we planned it all. We planned it all. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what how organized yeah. the parking was. It we was, planned uh, it all. Was, uh. It wasn't a long wait. But it's uh, it's amazing how many balls are in the air and how many things are going on. At one time, the guys from uh, Porsche Exclusive mm -hmm. came and Porsche Classic, and they also uh, they, they put on the, uh, uh, the Sonderwush sticker, mm -hmm. which um, we, well, we're the third car they've done, I think they said. Oh, gosh, the, uh, the, the ceremony of laying yeah. up the uh, sticker on the window. So when I put a sticker on a car, if I put a sticker on the car, it's just walk up to a window, slap it on, done. Yeah, not, this is a not little Porsche. bit different. This is so, a German way. They had it pre-measured already. <laughs> well, no, they came. They came the with a template. The yeah, that's what they, I mean. The quarter yeah. window template, and they knew the exact location of where that decal was going to be placed on the windshield and it took a good 10 15 minutes to apply this decal and the 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 joke that i made after they did that is like just think if it took them 15 minutes to apply this decal just think about how much time and effort for them to actually make the classic club coupe the thing is they're getting more and more well known especially boris who heads porsche exclusive mm -hmm. that he wanted to do a walk around the uh field and we couldn't go more than 10 feet with somebody <laughs> coming up. And, of course, it's all self-interest. Yeah. People have questions for yeah. either a car they're going to order or a car they have an order of something they want to do, a Porsche exclusive. So, you know, what, what should have been a 10-minute uh, walk turned into almost a two-hour walk. And we, we had Mr. Fabig. Yes. Mr. Yeah. Fabig came. And Who heads, uh, uh, heads Porsche the Classic and exclusive. Uwe Makrutsky. Uwe, the one who our yes man. Laid the sticker. Yep, he did the sticker. Yep. And then we had Uli. 
uh, Uli Lutz, uh, the she manager. She runs the restoration shop in, uh, in Stuttgart. Manager right? of Porsche Classic uh, Restoration, yep. So it was a who's who. Uh, we also made a huge, our huge announcement. What's going on November 13th? Yeah, Unstock. Unstock. Yeah. So we finally made it. It's public now. There's a video out there that we released on um, eBreak News. So we will be uh, in collaboration with West Coast Customs in Burbank, California. Uh, Ryan Freelinghouse did a welcome and invite. Was that a video or just audio? Because I wasn't in the view of the video wall, but I heard it. It's a video. It's so a video. He's doing, okay. a, he's doing a little walk. It's pretty cool. And so we're super excited about it. We have uh, a select few sponsors. There won't be, you know, there won't be a uh, vendor row per se as as normal mo normal events. But uh, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, the video wall behind the uh, stage was definitely a game changer. That was worth it, right? Like yeah, it was without a doubt. I mean, worth we it. we are we are very conservative in with our expenses for. For everything that we do, but you know, I saw the, you know, we had it at Amelia and uh, Porsche footed the bill for that one because of the introduction of the classic club coupe. But I think it just set the bar. And once I saw how well that worked, I'm like, man, let's get one for for Works Monterey. And then we got the quote, and I'm like, ooh, wow, that is definitely Porsche money. Uh, but thank you to Michelin and Porsche, which uh, sort of split the bill with us. And I think um, we have to have this wall. We just forever. need to teach someone else how to use it because I think Damon's the only one who, uh, yeah, who can yeah, show videos on it. So, so we had like a, a video person or crew kind of manage the wall at uh, they at, set uh, at, at Amelia, but we didn't have it for Monterey. We didn't realize how difficult it would be to kind of juggle. Damon obviously you know, was a hero and made, made it work, but for next year, Damon, don't worry, we're gonna get someone yeah. to manage that. Yeah, well, I, I think what it was is, I think we all assumed that the, the guys who set it up and the video guy was going to also manage the computer. Right, but, but for some reason, they're two different. They're two different companies, yeah. and the the audio guy just needs to focus on audio. Yeah. And then we didn't have a technician from the video yeah. guys. So, uh, but well, I mean, but the crowd still, never knew this. Yeah. this I was, was about to say. Not, I was about to say. It's almost yeah. like, you know, we, we see the behind the scenes and the hiccups, but I think the crowd yeah. didn't. Instead of at all. taking photos, you know, I relied on. We had plenty of photographers out there, so I was able to pull away, and we still have the social media and all that good stuff. But you can yeah. see. Uh, the entrance into the um, event was in, a, in the background of the uh, video wall, so I would always glance to see if there was a backup, and I never saw a backup. No, it was flowing. It was, just, it was a constant flow of cars, mm -hmm. but never uh, cars that were sitting still. They were always moving. Like I said, so many people came up to the stage and thanked us for an amazing event. And yeah, they got people who were the volunteers who were splitting the cars did a great job because we were directing the cars when they went on the field. And everyone that came through was supposed to be at in, in that area. Yep. Uh, none, the corral cars went in a different direction. So it was, uh, yeah, people didn't have to wait long. I, I wasn't sitting there trying to entertain anyone. It was a uh, nice well, More traffic. importantly, the uh, the police department didn't come in and start yelling at us for causing a backup. <laughs> yeah. Like Damon said, it was a good location. We were, like, behind uh, Meekum. Right. Uh, and it was uh, close, close to everything. Actually, we were right next to where the 2014 parade site was at the uh, high. Yeah, and if, if you're at Quail or if you're at any other events, I mean, to come over to um, to our event, it was quite close. I mean, much different than when we were uh, at the other past locations at uh, mm -hmm. Corral. And I'm not sure how long the wait was in past locations. There still was a slight wait, but it yeah, was much still shorter. Like, but it's expected. I mean, you're yeah, going exactly. to a huge place. You'll that, get, you know, f a five, ten minute wait. Once you get close, instead yeah. of an hour or two. Or yeah, I heard the the, the longest the was like forty five minutes, but mm -hmm. even then, people were still happy. Yeah, so getting yeah. there early is still always a good thing. Yep. Yes. Um, yep. But yeah. So and the food up, trucks and the food trucks were good too. Food trucks are good. I think we probably need one more. Oh, I, was, I mean, I, was, I got a volunteer ticket for lunch, and it's probably the best volunteer because you went to the vet, this one vendor. Oh, did you? Who had uh, brats, steak sandwiches, what pulled pork. And I thought this is the best volunteer lunch I've ever had. Oh, that's awesome! And it was better nice than a quick. box lunch. I, they said box lunch, so I was expecting you know oh. pre wrapped sandwich, but yeah. this was a plate. Nice of barbecue. It was uh, yeah. Kudos to uh, it's it's vendors. difficult for me. Like in the morning, I try to do a power bar and a cup of coffee, and once I'm on stage, I just do not eat. Like I'll drink water, 
but I just won't eat. I don't know. I yeah. can't. Eat. I had my Starbucks, but I I wasn't able to eat until. But that's the dinner. norm for you. I was you. gonna say so that's, that's, that's the norm for you. I just, could have eaten that day yeah. at lunch. Yeah. But uh. So then, uh, after we wrapped up works, we had a, a a volunteer and staff dinner on site, which was nice. But I think most people were just ready to turn in. Um, but we had to grab a Red Bull and power on because we uh, some of us headed over to the Zentrum for the um, the evening party there. Yeah, this is a uh, someone asked me how do you get invited to this, and. Uh, I assume they give some tickets to dealers. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're VIP customers. It, uh, I read on some of the forums that a lot of people felt uh, left out since they didn't get invited. Um, I guess ownership of an RS does not guarantee you uh, an invite to this um, party. Uh, it was a lot of people at this party. It, it was, was the packed. who's who of the Porsche world. Or at least people who thought they were the who's who. Well, I mean, you were there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, probably the biggest who's who uh, tied with the GT car was there. Yes, Mr. Pruninger. Mr. Pruninger himself. He was in all his glory uh, signing autographs. He had perfected the selfie. <laughs> I watched him. Um, he knew exactly which angle to lean on the car, and he would take people and reposition them. Uh, and I said, this guy has done this uh, before. Yeah. I mean, let's let's rattle off, let's uh, free flow here and rattle off a couple of names of people that we saw there. So, Alan Springer. Yep. Uh, Pruninger. Um, the Ingrams. Yeah, the, uh, Kiel Gruner, the CEO. Kiel Gruner, the CEO. Who else did we see? Was that it? No, there's a lot more. <laughs> there's a lot more. <laughs> Folks, uh, tons of people from Porsche AG, Porsche Classic. Uh, I believe Magnus Walker was there. I never saw Magnus. But I'm yeah. sure he probably was there. Yep. It yeah. was it was like uh, shoulder to shoulder. Shoulder to shoulder. And uh, between people who wanted to see the RS, people who wanted to be seen, um, it was a, a lot of food, a lot of drink. Um, but even though, I was as, about to say. <laughs> as it usually is at those events, uh, you don't really get to eat. You don't, I mean, God, God bless the people that actually eat. Usually they're just to hang out and talk to people because we always end up uh, at in and out and we did and this was no different this time we uh took some porsche ag folks because the event went till 10 o'clock mm -hmm. and then around we decided we were going to leave at quarter of 10 and the, the porsche folks that we hang out with they uh they were more than ready to yeah and that leave. was that was a fun time there's about uh i say 15 16 of us and as we were leaving um, a special dignitary. Thought well, what was that funny was I was waving to our president, Tom, to tell him, that, hey, we're leaving. And uh, this person thought I was waving to them. He's <laughs> waving back to me. And I see him walk up. And, you know, when you're not expecting to see someone, right. it takes a couple seconds to click in. And he's smiling. And he's like, oh, it's great to see you again. And uh, he's like, it's Mark Porsche. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he goes, you were waving at me. And I didn't want to tell him, no, I wasn't. I was waving at Tom. But uh, yeah, we. Had, well, when's the last time we? At least I saw him was at parade. I saw him at the Peterson a uh, year. So or two for ago. me, it's uh, longer than that. It was at yeah. the parade. So Mark Porsche is the son of uh, Ferdinand Alexander, uh, which is Butsy Porsche, the one who uh, designed the 911 and the 904, who's passed away. But uh, yeah, Mark was uh, just like you saw him yesterday. He was, yeah, uh, it was cool. And uh, so we told him, you know, we were heading to In and Out. And you could tell he's like, oh, man, I want to come. And so I was like, you're absolutely welcome to join us. And then he realizes he's actually waiting for two of his friends to arrive. And you could really tell that he was torn. And uh, he said, well, let me see how, how I can figure this out. So so he said, let me see your phone. I'm like, okay. So Mark Porsche keys in his, his phone number. He's, okay. he's like, okay, so I will text you when we arrive. And, um, you know, so I'm like, cool, Mark Porsche is going to come so to the Porsche world. Us. This is like you got a phone number from the Kardashian. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> totally. I was like, Mark Porsche just put his number in my phone. I'm like, so, so any wait. info about the IPO? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, I, you know, he's, he texted, he apologized. He's like, he's not going to make it. But thanks to Ilko, Ilko said, uh, got his order and uh, Ilko ordered his in and out and ran it back to him. So Ilko became Uber Eats, but totally worth it. Mark Porsche got his uh, his in and out I think he knew exactly what he's like, double-double animal style. 
<laughs> he knew exactly what he wanted. Yeah, Porsche guys are funny. They uh, yeah. genuinely wanted to go because we it, it was sure. so crowded and they're being pulled at all uh, directions. So we said, listen, if you if you can make it, we're meeting at the front of the uh, Zentrum at quarter of ten, <laughs> and if you can't, you can't. So, and I was walking by uh, Alex, and I just motioned that you know, yeah, uh, we're leaving. Goodbye. And he, the person he was talking to, I heard him say, "Well, it was great talking to you. I have to go." <laughs> well, here, <laughs> <Mid -sentence. laughs> so so here's the thing. So most of the folks at Porsche Classic was ready to go, but you can't really go until the boss is ready to go. And so I'm walking up to uh, Alex, Mr. Fabig, and he's talking to someone, a customer like that. But you don't want to say, "Hey, Mr. Fabig, when you re are you ready to go to In and Out?" And so I just kind of looked at him and said, so, Mr. Fabig, the meeting that we were planning for later this evening, uh, what time would you be ready to go? And he knew exactly what I was talking about. He's like, let's do that meeting at quarter to 10. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was pretty they, cool. They love, uh, they love it in and out. Yeah. And they were very, it, was, it was like taking school kids on a field trip to McDonald's or something. They were Not they only were did – so that – so, so we had that that's friday night right friday night we're eating in and out and then we talk about what we're doing for saturday turns out mr fabic had in and out the next morning something yeah oh after uh after lemons <laughs> after lemons went, he, he i told went. him i said you told me you're going to a meeting yeah. <laughs> is there anybody here who did not go to in and out burger this week Oh, you have to. Well, okay, it, it, but, was, it was our second national secretary, Todd Benz, had oh. never been in and out. He hadn't. No, no, it was oh, his so. first time, and it was Uli. Uli. Uli's, uh, Uli's been there before. No, she said. It was, no, that was she, the first she time. Was wearing the hat too. Oh yeah, we yeah, yeah, Everyone yeah. who uh, it and was Thomas. the first time wear a hat. No. What did Todd think? I think I guess he. Who can? You got to like it. Okay, Good. okay. Here's where we take that culinary departure just for a bit on this uh, episode. So Uli, who is I think also quite the foodie as well, she recognized the same thing that Manny and I have recognized: is the burgers. They're delicious because they're fresh. Are they the best burger? No. There's other burgers that are great, but for the for the money, they're great. French fries. You have to eat with a burger. However, the French fries at In and Out are awesome. No, 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 yes, no, no, they, no. If you don't like no, fresh no, potato, no. Uh, no. You know, no. First, no. you first you uh, you slam a Target top nine fourteen, and now you're saying that In and Out fires. <laughs> I, I look at your proportions. I look at mine. Okay, so, so you don't like I'm fresh cut fries. No, it's not that. No, I don't need fresh cut fries. I want tasteful fries. Yes. Preservative, ta tasty fries. So I could care McDonald's. less if it has a pound of preservatives. So in Uli, it. Uli came up with the same. She's like, the burger was fantastic. The the French fries were okay. And I told Uli what Manny and I would, you know, try to do is we go to we go to McDonald's and we get the French fries, just French fries, and then we go to In and Out so that we can have the best of That's both the worlds. Perfect that is the perfect. And combo. there's uh, there's quite a few In and Outs right across the street from They're McDonald's. Always, they so. are always across yeah. the McDonald's. So yeah. so maybe your problem is that you're not getting a extra crispy. No, nope, I get a extra that. crispy. Yeah, I get I, so you can so I order my fries at In and Out extra crispy. They are better than the yeah. standard. You know, in and out fries, but it's still McDonald's fries. McDonald's sprays their fries with sugar. <laughs> I've, I read about this, and this is why yeah. it tastes so good. Oh, yes, and, uh, and Lord knows what preservatives they put on, but they must, it's a tasty <laughs> preservative. See, preservatives right. are and not they are I still frozen, in and out fries. And they're frozen, right? Right, yeah. I mean, you've seen the way they make fries at, at, in and out. It's pretty transparent. Yeah, it's potato, I mean, it is the freshest. It's, I will, it I will sounds it great, out. but it's it, not it is. Taste. See, it does taste better than pretty much any other fry, oh, in my no. opinion. Gosh, not that is not possible. No, uh, so the folks, guy who eats once a day. If you're listening to this and you've had in and out fries, what, what do you guys think? Do you think in and out fries reign supreme? Or do you think McDonald's fries are better? Uh, unfortunately, with polling people, I first have it's like it's like voting in the election. <laughs> How much do you know about the candidates? Well, are uh, you uh, just basing your vote on what they look like? No, I, I'm saying those that have had both. McDonald's. We want your input. And, McDonald's yeah. is definitely my vote. It's like it's sacrilege to say in and out fries aren't great. No, uh, I, right. I know a lot of people don't like them. So. Yeah, uh, uh, Five Guys fries are better than In and Out. No, it's not true. <laughs> That's <laughs> very. True. All right, all right, all right. Let's let's get in let's get fries, back. Let's... Extra crispy, animal style. 
pretty good. Yeah, that's there we that go. Is Thank good. Thank you, Rob. Like, that so, means so you, when you when you do the animal style, that's when you get the sauce on the fries, and that takes it to a different cheese. food category. Yeah, that that's not, it. Yeah. I could put animal style on my cat, and she would taste good. <laughs> Manny, Manny, <laughs> Manny, don't make me have to edit this episode. Jeez, ay, ay. all right. So back back on back on focus. So now we're into Saturday, and Rob and I have the prestigious. Uh, opportunity to judge at Concours de la Mons. Rob, you want to share with them what we did there? Uh, can we? No. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I mean, we everybody get knows chosen to judge German cars again. Right, right. Um, yeah, it was remarkable. Vu, we had that uh, that that ultra shorty uh, microbus. We had like the Safari New Beetle. Uh, it was crazy. Dodie's Dodie's BMW. Dodie's, which we really, the, what was it, like a 502 or something? It was yeah. crazy, like early 50s, obscure BMW that looked like it had been, I don't know, like an artificial reef or it, something. It was, it, was, it was in the woods. They, like, cut it out of the woods. There was, like, crazy. a tree growing through it or something. Yeah. I mean, And they, um, they got the, it was a V8 car. They got the motor running, and they actually drove it from Dodie's. I mean, that's, what, two miles. But the fact that, they, that uh, Wayne Carini drove it, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that was that was amazing, and and you know politics got in the way of of you know our class judging with that car. You can you can explain. <laughs> yeah, so we we really liked we liked that car, but thankfully we knew that that was going to be the worst of show, and the car that probably had the most the best story, the best spirit of lemons was this young lady who um, saved this two thousand Beetle, and she worked on it herself and put new drive shafts on it and uh did these like you said off- 2000 2000 so it's a water cold or like yeah a it's a, it's a yeah, modern, it's a one. Right. A modern yeah. one but she made it look like it was like a one you would you know from mad max mad max and she did all the welding and did all the stuff to it and here's the thing is we thought she was cool we thought the car was cool that like on her dashboard she had the diagram of a relay and how a relay works and i don't know why i didn't know why initially but then after afterwards i turns out she's like a battle bots um crew or chair or something like that and she's a an amazing battle bots person do you guys even know what battle bots is? i used to watch yeah. that when i was a kid yeah they still have it though they still have it so. they still have it so she's a battle bots whatever and um so that made it even cooler and guess what she graduated so we're talking is like, oh where are you from she's like i'm from maryland i'm like sweet you're from maryland yeah where'd you live she's like oh i live in howard county i'm like what that's amazing she's like well like what high school did you go to i was like you didn't go to athelton which is my high school she's like yeah i went to athelton <laughs> so she's from our area small world small world so yeah. i think uh, i think this event has jumped a shark oh boy here I we do. go this is why there were two cars there that had no business being there. And oh, that so before you get into that, would my Camry be a good car? Yes, for that? your Camry. Your Camry would be a good so car. So this this event, when I I there. think I've been going every year as a spectator, it, it used to have really unique, uh, strange cars mm-hmm. that people were proud of. Now it seems like it's people are just trying too hard to make their car stand out or make it weird enough. Mm-hmm. And, and that takes away the organic feel of it was originally. But there was two cars there that had no business being there. There was a Ferrari 488, I think. And then there was a modified Porsche that I, I yeah, thought. Yeah, I didn't understand Neither that. one of these cars should It was be, a nice car. It was a nice car. but nice just... cars. They, and, and it isn't just a, a crappy cars. It's, uh, it's, it's cars that you look at and you go, oh, that's pretty funny, you know. Or yeah. Not, not, I mean, somebody had a saddle with a horse on top. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't uh, do much. What, what did you see the upside down Camaro? What's that? The upside down Camaro. Yeah, that but, was interesting. Uh, but it's. Uh, yeah. I just feel like the show is uh, and now. It's trying too hard. It just jumped the shark. That's my opinion. Yeah. All right. You know what so, I wish they would do? Honestly, Haggerty does a show in the UK called Festival of the Unexceptional, and the idea there is it's for the best examples of the worst cars ever. And that's a lot of fun because everything that shows up there is absolutely perfect. I don't know if anyone saw that that light blue Mercury Bobcat. No, but it's it's like a hundred cars just like that. There was like a like a you know some Granny's Bobcat, which is the Mercury version of the Pinto, I think. And the thing had low miles; it was absolutely pristine. I, I would love 
a show where where it's curated like that, where it's just really really great examples of like Chevette's, you know, escorting well, it's, called, uh, it's called Radwood. Well, even, Radwood is where the cars that I am amazed that yeah, a, that preserve. anyone would preserve a K car so well. That's yeah. what made it not not that someone stuck a, a horse on top of a, a K car, but here's a K car in perfect or do, original Dodge Caravans yeah. in perfectly yeah. mint condition. But but yeah. there are a lot of good cars at Radwood too. You know they're, you know three hundred eights and and um, you know nice nine forty fours and stuff like that. I mean Radwood is not exclusively just best examples. But, but you have cars. you have to love the spirit of Concord. Every you know there are people dressed up in funny costumes. Um, yeah, some of the cars were kind of like over the top, but the spirit and people were just laughing and having a good time. I like that. I did like seeing the uh, Citroen. Dushavos, those were two CVs. Those were amazing shape. And what was the um, the little car, the three wheeler? Was it Trident or I don't know? There were some little three car, three wheel cars there. Um, probably the car that got my attention was the Nissan Leaf, where yes, the guy that put in. Yeah, that was way cool. Uh, Rob, did you get to see that? Uh, I did. It was what was stuffed in the back of that. It was. It was. You know. It was not powered by. You know. Lithium. Battery, I think it was like sure. a Kawasaki ZX10 or something like that. It was a that hybrid. Was yeah. Yeah. He, <laughs> so he put a ZX10 motor and adapted it to the drivetrain. Interestingly enough, the uh, the battery part of the car was still working and could still deliver about 35 miles uh, on a charge. But then he could switch over to this ZX10. Um, engine and now his Nissan Leaf does zero to 60 in like five seconds. <laughs> you know, they did a Radwood there on uh Friday night, I think, at Laguna Seca. Who went? I, I haven't seen one single photo on social because media because it's Friday night, people are like tired. Yeah, I, and ready I, to I go was, to uh, I'm hoping that some I see something, but I haven't seen anything at all from Radwood. Or, was that at the track? It was at the track, mm -hmm. and so it started like at five or six. Huh. Which I thought was really strange because, like you said, uh, by by six o'clock people are tired because they've been at doing different things all day, and uh, you know at the track usually that's the time you leave. Oh, you da there. Damon pulled up the car I was thinking of. It's the Reliant, Reliant Robin. Robin. Reliant Robin. Robin. Yeah, that was uh, pretty cool to see car, in person. Yeah. yeah, those are British. It's, uh, <laughs> made famous on Top Gear when Jeremy Clarkson would keep rolled on, it, uh, rolling yeah. it. Yeah, totally yeah. a bad idea, that car. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so yeah. the Germans came uh, from Porsche. Uh, they came again to see uh, Lemons. Um, they made sure they had all their tetanus shots ahead of time. So while we were at Lemons, Damon, you were at the I track. I was over at RM. Oh, you're at the RM. Um, so Sally Carrera, as we know. Sally Special. For, or Yes, Sally Special, inspired by Sally Carrera. Sold for three point six million, I believe, right around there. And um, a colleague uh, of ours, Laura Burstein, and I had been planning to do an interview with Boris Appenbrink and Grant Larson, who both had uh, big parts in the project, and interviewed them about it. Get the get the story about it. Um, we did a Tech Tactics Live with Jay Ward, so some of that story is already out there on our yep. YouTube channel. Yep. But this video will focus on. Um, the car, not the sketches and the idea. Um, so that'll be coming out this week. Um, so by the time you listen to this, it should be on YouTube. And it's a stunning car, great color, um, very special car to see amongst all the other RM cars out there and probably beat most of them when it came to the price it sold for, which I think is amazing. Yeah, I think we're going to cover that a little bit later. Yeah. So so i yeah i mean we'll, we'll talk a little bit more yeah well i specifics. won't go into detail about the sally but, special anymore but after that i went down the street to the porsche centrum and did a video on a gt2 or gt3 rs the 992 version which had just been revealed the night before and uh released that video yesterday so yeah, head to our youtube channel watch it it's about 10 minutes if you don't want to spend 45 minutes watching something with and Andreas Pruninger and some other channels, which I highly recommend. Uh, but if you need to watch something kind of quick, 
head to our channel, 10 minutes, and you can find out basically the same things. Yeah, so special thanks to Luke Bandison, Porsche Cars, North yeah. America, and Michael PR, Tam. And Michael Tam yeah. for doing the video. Michael, we love Michael. He yeah. is... He's he's amazing. He is a Porsche geek. He's a Porsche yeah. geek. In, in a good way. And we mean yeah. that with the most respect. He uh, he is a diehard Porsche enthusiast and knows everything in and out. Yeah, I loved the video when we watched it because it was 10 minutes, but it went by so fast because um, unlike other videos where the YouTube personality is trying to get his his little uh, exposure, this was just Michael in front of the camera. Just the facts. And it was just like a machine gun of facts and little <laughs> things about yeah about the car and you could tell he's very enthusiastic and, yep. and this car is spectacular it's, and he's uh, he's the uh the head of sports cars um two, two, two door uh, two doors for porsche yeah yeah it's funny because he uh, knows his stuff he was like he asked me so how long do you want the video to be uh 10 minutes or so that's usually what they end up being five minutes is fine just however long it takes you want to guess what the video is? It's <laughs> exactly 10, minutes. Ten minutes. That's that's <laughs> Michael Tam. So here's the thing about Michael. Uh, to give you an idea, like he not only loves Porsches, but he is very technical and very precise. And I remember I had uh, showed up at the Experience Center for another meeting, and I see a Lucid out on the course just being pounded on, pounded on. And I'm like, who is doing all these launches? And uh, there must he must have did like fifty some launches. Like we were in the meeting, and I could see these launches going off in the peripheral as I'm trying to pay attention. And then later on, I find out it was Michael. Michael was just checking on the repeat performance of the Lucid, and uh, he sat there. He's like, "I did it until I got sick." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. So after uh, Lemons, um, we we had an opportunity to uh, see our buddy David Morton over at Meekum and there were some pretty, we talked about it in our last uh, episode that the Paul Walker 911 as well as some other 911s uh, or not, uh, Porsches were being auctioned on Saturday and as timing went, we, we were hoping that we would be there to see the car go across the block but David uh, gave me the one of the most amazing opportunities uh i got to drop the hammer for the paul walker 73 oh, which was cool. way cool way cool and it's a lot of pressure just the mere act of you know hitting the hammer three times i didn't want to be the guy to mess up and manny was there i don't know if you could tell if i was nervous or not. my arm there's you your arm. arm oh you're in your phone <laughs> <laughs> i was the camera bitch <laughs> And you held my sunglasses for me. Yes. <laughs> Can we talk about what it sold for? Yeah, do it. Uh, it was nine hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, right? That's right. And yep. while they were auctioning the the one, the guy that won was in the audience. Uh, the other bidder was on the phone, and it was hilarious because at the last minute they were like, "What's twenty-five more thousand dollars?" They're talking to the guy on the phone, and they're like, "Too bad he's not here because we would totally lay into him." Uh, but it hammered at nine seventy-five. Yep. So what's the premium on that? I mean, we talked about this car the last time. It's kind of a, it's a very nice, but not sort of, you know, slavishly correct uh, older restoration of a 27RS that might have been, what, a $650,000 car uh, had it not had the Paul Walker Association. So, you know, the Paul Walker provenance added, you know, at least $300,000 to it, right? I, th I thought the seller did well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because well, like you said, it wasn't a completely accurate. Uh, it was the second uh, series uh, Carrera RS. But what yeah. would it, what would have a correct quote unquote correct car gone for? That was a first series. Right? That was it. Yeah. Uh, you know, a correct car might have gone for yeah you know, six to seven. Wow. You know, something like that. So, so you know, so this they car did really well. Yeah, in my yeah, mind, no, I, I think so. Well. I mean, there's probably a three or four hundred thousand uh, dollar uh, premium for the Paul Walker Association, which is oh, it's a beautiful seems car. about right. And the car sold for I think somewhere in the middle of the presale estimate. So I mean, not quite what a two seven RS lightweight would have brought, uh -huh. um, but certainly more than than uh, a garden variety two uh, seven RS touring. Bought well, bought well. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. a lot of fun. Well, uh, you know standing on the auctioneer's uh, platform and looking out at the audience at the different viewpoint, then, uh, then you know, when we're looking at this photo, they're looking at us, but we're looking at them and all the lights, and you're seeing the monitors, what the, the auctioneer's looking at, and 
like Vu said, it moves really quick. In fact, the guy at one point like had his arm on Vu to make sure he doesn't hammer <laughs> beforehand uh, before it's ready. Yeah. And uh, then they announce so they announce him and they announce uh, they announce Vu's name and 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 uh, the Porsche Club of America. And so someone else heard this. Well, the announcer, the 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 um, the guys uh, that were announcing each car. Uh, one was Chris Jacobs. Yes, who's on uh, overhaul in it. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. So when he heard Porsche Club of America, he's like, oh, I'm a Porsche Club of he America. He came running over to us after we were walking down, uh, getting ready to leave, and he said, I'm a proud PCA member. Yep. And uh, he, yep. heard, he heard us being announced and came over. And we, we ex- exchanged pleasantries. And I'm like, hey, let's make sure we connect and would love to have you at um, you know PCA events. And no joke. I'm thinking I would have to remember, but sitting in my inbox when uh, I looked yesterday, there he goes. Chris Jacobs said, "Hey, great seeing you at Mecom." And then I said, "So where?" I, like I didn't know where he lived, right? So he said, "I live in Burbank." I'm like, "That's perfect because we're going to have an event November 13th in Burbank." So more than likely we'll get. And there to was see a him. big cheer when uh, they said Porsche Club of or Porsche Club of America. Yeah, yeah. there was a big cheer from the audience, so that uh, it made us feel good. Yeah. But uh, we, we were tight on time. Like we were, you know, we wanted to stop by. We didn't think this was going to happen. And then this made us run a little bit late, but totally worth it. And then we made a beeline to Pebble Beach. And if people com- ever complain <laughs> about our parking situation, Pebble wow. Beach takes the cake of like sending you to a different zip code with no signs. And I literally had to circle back and um, have a conversation with an attendant at this one lot saying, you sent me down there and there's no one to receive me and I had to circle back. But he told us there was more parking. There wasn't more parking. There wasn't more parking. We ended up, at, I said, we're like at the next of the universe because <laughs> we ended up back where we started. And uh, I think it was just buying time, hoping cars would leave. It, it was terrible. And the funny thing, you talking about that Sunday? Was uh, no, this we was were. on Saturday, Saturday. Yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, I mean, the best thing to do if you're if you're going anywhere in Pebble Beach or on the lodge or anything is just park in the municipal garages in in downtown Monterey and take an Uber. Oh, that's the secret. That yeah. is the secret. I, I that is certainly the secret for that, uh, huh? yeah for Sunday. For Sunday, yeah. yeah. Uh, we weren't going. I I said to Boo, I said I'll I'll never go to Pebble Beach. This is such a cluster. It was um, it was a mess, and then we got on the shuttle and um, actually where. You want to share where we went? Why we were going? Well, what, so we're in the parking lot. Uh, I would call. This is where you park when you have no connections. You don't know anybody. Lot sixteen. Yes, it was uh, <laughs> the furthest parking lot you could possibly park. Dirt parking lot, but in the dirt parking lot was a Bugatti Bugatti Veyron. <laughs> Veyron. There's a, a lot Veyron. of Ferraris, <laughs> just covered in this dust from this uh, dirt parking lot. So we uh, we got the shuttle. We made it just let's, as the show started. Let's not forget Matt Farah's Ferrari was sitting yeah, in. Yeah, we didn't dirt. know it at the time, but uh, we were going there to watch uh, um, Spike's Car Radio a podcast was live at the forums at Pebble Beach, and I had gotten some tickets uh, for Vu and I. So uh, we made it just as the lights went down and they started the show. So it was perfect timing. Um, fortunately, the shuttle dropped us off right at those tents where the um, the podcast was, and we got to see uh, Spike Scar Radio live. And Matt, Matt Farah, his first thing he talks about is uh, how he had to park <laughs> in like the, another zip code. And uh, he evidently uh, didn't know anybody either have uh, special parking because he got to park the same lot and take the same shuttle bus that we did. Before we get into uh, Spike's session, I know Rob's got to go. I wanted to um, talk a little bit about his thoughts on prices and auctions and what was the general consensus? Well, the general consensus was, I think a lot of people were surprised. I think that, um, you know, going into it, the feeling was, you know, the market may have have hit its peak and, and, you know, we're going to see a little bit more of a disconnect between uh, sellers expectations and buyers willingness to pay. And that is not how it happened at all. I think, uh, you know, they're still adding uh, post block sales to the total number. But the last time I looked, it was 465 or 470 million. Uh, is, that, which is, is that a record for this weekend? That is a record. That is a record That's for amazing. Monterey. I think the previous one was just under 400 million. So, Jeez. you know, it starts getting absolutely mind boggling when you realize, uh, you know, this is almost a half a billion dollars worth of cars changing hands 
over the course of the week this is probably bigger than the gdp of you know at least several countries wow. it's it's crazy it's absolutely crazy so yeah i you know, for people who are expecting to see some air starting to come out of the market uh not happening it's it's yeah. just so uh, uh, mind-boggling next podcast we do next monday or wednesday uh whatever day we do it um it's going to be about uh, the market i told rob we're going to deep dive okay. into what we learned from monterey because i know rob went to a lot of different auctions uh, yep. to see the preview so we're gonna go a little deeper dive into uh why why we think some cars got uh, the pricing and you know what what does this really say about the market and whether or not we're in a recession mm. Right. All right. So, so certainly not in the car world. Do you want to talk about the Concorde really quickly before I have to uh, jump off? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, Sunday uh, was the you know the Pebble Beach Concorde d'Elegance, um, and it's typically not the most Porsche heavy uh, thing. Uh, it it still leans really heavily towards pre-war you know full classic cars and all that stuff. But um, there were some familiar cars there. We mentioned already that the uh, Audrain uh, collections uh, 904 was there that won the uh, post-war preservation class absolutely amazing car there's no way this car wasn't going to win it's you know it's it's absolutely you know a time capsule um the uh ingrams brought a beautifully restored 550 spider that car i believe came in third uh in the post-war racing class and uh there was also a big exhibit uh, celebrating the 100th anniversary of, of the 24 Hours of Le Mans, and uh, a couple of Porsches in that, but you know, obviously my favorite was uh, the uh, ex uh, Derek Bell, uh, Hans Stuck, Holbert uh, 956 in That's rock gorgeous. And color. So yeah, isn't that just absolutely beautiful? So yeah, that's kind of a rundown of, of Pebble Beach. And as I said earlier, if you're going in the you know next year or whatever, the best thing to do is just park in one of the garages in downtown Monterey and take an Uber, because uh, it is you know it's it's a massively well attended event, and uh, you know uh, most of the lots for civilians are pretty far away. Very cool. All right, Rob. Well, if you guys split, no worries. We're going to soldier on. We still have a couple more things to cover. Um, back to uh, Spike's live podcast. Yeah, so it was. Uh, I, I'm a faithful listener of that podcast. I listen to a lot of podcasts because of my commute. And uh, it was pretty cool to see him, all four guys uh, on stage and uh, bantering back and forth and discussing different uh, topics. Uh, actually, that episode dropped today. So if you're not a listener, you can look up Spike's Car Radio and listen. Uh, the sound, I was really, we're, now that we're doing podcasts, we're very uh, cognizant of sound quality. And you can definitely hear it there in a live, yeah. you know, it's not like a studio sound. Because they were just using regular mics, and I thought, if they sound just they do in the studio, yeah, <laughs> as much as we try to get all the pops and little things off the uh our sound, but you could tell they were in a live uh, live setting. I thought it was pretty cool that they um, they incorporated the audience at the end yeah. and took questions from people. And um, yeah, that was a fun time. And then from there, we went back um, to the Zentrum. I had some meetings with uh, Porsche Classic, and and after that, we had the opportunity to attend the Sally Special Auction at RM and uh seeing and the car in person. just to back up a second uh, oh. when you went to the meetings i stayed at the zentrum and the zentrum is pretty cool also because they have different th different uh, seminars and presentations and uh, the one they had was about um vintage and uh art um but they had stefan johansson the former uh, porsche driver but uh, i guess more importantly the ferrari fact uh, formula one driver because mm -hmm. uh, he does his own uh, uh, photographic art and whatnot so it was pretty interesting uh, hearing his perspective of uh, his art like behind the steering wheel what he sees as a driver versus what a photographer would see you know looking at the driver uh, but you, you get to hear and meet and see these kind of people that are so close to uh, uh that you don't, normally you wouldn't get anywhere near the Zentrum, it was free. Yeah, uh, um, the what three days? Were they were open three days? So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. For Zentrum. For Zentrum. Pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. they had a host of seminars, and you could have checked the schedule and you know. 
various guests. And hey, if you're on their mailing list, uh, I just got an email from them saying uh, uh, register to be notified about this event, which I did, and then they sent you emails uh, about the different events and what the topics were, and yeah, it was uh, it was pretty interesting. So then we went to the RM auction to see how Sally Special would do, and to see that car in person. There's so many, one, the color just pops. Like you can't really capture it in, in photos to see it in person in the light. The, the, it's, it's a beautiful color. It's a one-off color for this car. And uh, there's, they had fun with it. They had fun with it in the sense where there's so many Easter eggs in this car from the little badges to the, um, the tire. What was it called? Sally Carrera Metallic? Sally Sal Blue Metallic. Sally, Sally Blue, Blue Metallic. Metallic. All one word. Yeah, so that everyone asks, uh, even even like my kids ask, did the new car have the tattoo? And yes, it does. It does have the tattoo. And then it has on the um, the drive mode selector on the wheel. ka -chow. Now, the picture you're showing on the screen was the uh, one Easter egg, which I thought fascinating, was the only, this is the first time they put a part from an older generation 911 onto the current generation. And that part was the uh, Carrera badge, which was from the 996 to play a uh, uh, represent to the original Sally represent Carrera. Represent 996 is yeah, so Sally that's special. A, that's that a good Carrera trivia script. question as to uh, you know, the, the, the underhood was signed by everyone involved uh, with the movie and the car. Um, yeah, they pulled out all the stops. They brought back Bonnie Hunt to voice Sally Carrera. I know you were going to make uh, fun of me because I thought that was really cool that Bonnie Hunt was standing right next to me. <laughs> on the, uh, on the um, uh, drive mode button, it said uh, ka Cachao instead yeah. of uh, you know the regular uh, wording from Porsche. But it looks so, f I mean, it is factory, right? So it looks perfectly in place in the little insignia on the dashboard. So this was a 101 car uh, that was done by um, the Sunderwatch program. Mm -hmm. Exclusive. And uh, Porsche exclusive, so uh, we were lucky enough to uh, sit with those guys. Um, you know, the the really VVIPs were up front, uh, like Jay Ward and Kale Gruner, mm -hmm. uh, Bonnie Hunt. Uh, but the here's the so thing: is this car started life as a GTS and went into um, the exclusive uh, area and got finished off. But this car was not built nut and bolt from ground from the ground like some of the other projects like like the classic club coupe um but having said that though the i think this car sets a record for a new car at 3.6 million but the cool thing for was right Porsche. before the auction for Porsche. But right before the auction starts we were sitting in the last last row of seats and we uh we asked each other including the guys from exclusive and classic what we thought the car would go for and uh, I think I was the highest at 1.25. I was, uh, I will admit, I was at 900. I think uh, Boris at 1.1, Alex at 800,000. And wow, it was like Three within point. seconds, it was over. <laughs> uh, someone took it to a million from like 600,000. Oh. It was just a huge jump. They weren't even asking, they were asking for 700,000. Somebody, uh, one of the uh, Barkers yelled out 1 million. And uh, it's well, it I mean, accelerated so quickly. The, the car is amazing. The 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 cause uh, that this uh, the charity that they chose uh, for this car, um, you know, helping the mothers and daughters, uh, the refugees, and uh, to go to three point six. I mean, there was tears in the crowd. Yeah, the whole you could feel electricity oh. in the crowd. Uh, because it was just so much excitement watching this car climb and by climb. far every car that we've seen you know go across a block this as soon as sally special rolled onto the stage everybody's cell phones went up everyone's cell phones was well, more uh, impressive was you could only bid on this if you were in the u.s correct this was not available for international bidding and i heard from porsche that they got a lot of complaints because they had international clients who wanted to bid on this car yeah but could not you uh you have to take delivery at a dealer so mm -hmm. it wasn't something you could drive Right, the minute you won, um, it was uh, that uh, everything was deductible except the MSRP. Right, cost of the car. In case you're wondering if you got a tax deduction for this. Uh, and the the, the gentleman that won the car was in the room. 
Yeah. And that was incredibly exciting, incredibly exciting. And yeah, had, I don't think there wasn't anyone that wasn't uh, blown away and happy. And I, so you know, what was the MSRP? Uh, you know what? I don't know, but I would say a GTS. This probably but is with a, all the options. Like I would say this would be like a 250 car. Yeah, something like that. I don't know how much if they're charging MSRP before exclusive. Yeah gets a hold of it or oh that's you know, true i'm, I'm thinking of, that's what i would think they yeah. would charge order regular msrp yeah but I, cause I don't know if they can put a price to what exclusive did because like those wheels were special one-off wheels mm -hmm. yep to uh, mimic the uh, 996 turbo twist right uh, only available for this car one of one set yeah it's yeah. uh and um so af after the hammer went down on that car i felt so bad i think it was a ferrari gto that went after it yeah you can hear the air just, just disappear. And people, people Everyone's are like, leaving. This GTO is being auctioned, and people are congratulating each other uh, about the Sally special. And then I would say a third of the room just left, right? Mm. However, though, I did you know, peek to see the GTO still did like, I want to say $4 million? Uh, Don't quote me. Yeah. But it was still a very high number. But it was just interesting to see. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe that that the person that won that one got a deal because there was just so much of a distraction of the the mass exodus from Sally Special. So, so that wrap. We're, man, we're almost to the end of the week. That wrapped up uh, Saturday uh, Saturday night, and um, we went to Turn Twelve for dinner, and that was a. I, I think it's a sister restaurant to the Mexican one. Baja Cantina. Baja, Baja Cantina. Cantina. I think so, because yeah. it's kind of similarly set up. But again, don't quote me on that. But cool place. Try to find a place for 16 people Saturday night after RM Auction lets out. We were so lucky that we uh, were able to get in there. Um, but then Sunday, 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 Rob and a number of people ended up at Pebble Beach. Uh, I, I, I got to say, um, I know it was a record turnout for Pebble Beach. But holy cow, it's five hundred and twenty five dollars now to go to Pebble Beach. I remember when when it was less than two hundred. Yeah. Now it's five twenty five and uh Well how much do you think Quail is? Well Quail's out of this world. <laughs> quail. Uh, but but <laughs> Quail more, I think. Quail gives you parking and food mm -hmm. and drink. Oh, okay. So Pebble, you're not getting anything. You're getting a shuttle bus. But uh, it's Pebble. It's the whole reason why Monterey God Car Week exists. So for the people who don't have five twenty five to shell out, uh, we instead went to Laguna Seca. We we had you know this kudos goes to Manny, you know he found out probably the best kept secret as far as an event for Monterey Car Week this week. Yeah, that was a uh, a hill climb was happening for the first time ever. Uh, Bruce Canepa's uh, idea, and he told us that he had wanted to do this for ten years, uh, so they ran, ran backwards on the track uh, at start finish, but they went up to uh, started it at turn eleven. And then went all the way up to the top of the corkscrew where the finish line was. And it was a, a fairly empty track because not a lot of people knew about this. And I don't think they charge entry. Um, but the, the neat thing was all the cars from Saturday were still in the – most of them were still in the paddock or in the uh, tent, the historic tent. So, you know, we walked in. We saw two GTOs, two Ferrari uh, – GTOs uh, just sitting there, 63 GTOs just sitting there by it, themselves, it 40 was million a, each. It was a photographer's dream to mm -hmm. be pretty much alone with these cars and being able to get the shots without anybody around it. It was awesome. Yeah, 917s, 908 just sitting by themselves. And uh, they had picked 60 cars from the historics uh, that ran on Saturday to run up the hill. And they had a really diverse field of cars. And it was uh, including... Uh, the Doc Hudson car. Yeah. And what we learned uh, from Jay Ward was that uh, uh, most of the cars they built that ran were electric because they ran in the, in the amusement parks. Uh, but this one was not. This was gas and was not not only that, but it was based on a Craftsman truck. Yeah, when, they uh, said a Winston, car. a Winston Cup truck, NASCAR yeah, truck. Yeah, Craftsman truck series frame, and they put the uh, Doc Hudson body on it. So this thing hauled. Oh, this my This was gosh. not a parade-going car. This was a full-blown, caged-out. Yep, full full slicks. And, Who was uh, driving? So it was uh, Bruce uh, Canepa and yeah. um, Gunnar Gunner 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 driving it. Yeah. So Gunner's he, the he one. left a, a burnout down the front Yeah, he straight. corded the tires. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so, so the funny thing is there was a drift Corvette there, which you know had, had done a burnout and side drift here's here's go. the photo or video of the the corvette going up the corkscrew and doing you know burnouts and such but gunner Jeanette 
gets into Doc Hudson and he lays a patch pretty much the full length of the start. And uh, when he came back in, the uh, mechanic was looking, checking over. He's like, uh, you corded the tires. <laughs> it was just, it, I wonder it if just, those were a brand new set. Probably. If right? you have to ask, it's yeah, right? yeah, too much for you. But it was really cool. And then we took the opportunity. Um, so uh, Bruce Canapa, he actually drove the Doc Hudson car at the and beginning. the little uh, Fiat Abarth. And they drove a that Fiat. Thing that was also a uh, Gunner with Racing. A, uh, with the Porsche engine in it. Yes, but it looked like a four cam engine. A four cam with a little uh, uh, corkscrew, wine, corkscrew, wine, uh, yeah, wine corkscrew, opener on the yeah. on the back. But uh, he came in, and the thing is, you had amazing access. We sat on pit wall, and uh, when Bruce came back, we kind of looked at each other and said, "Maybe this is an opportunity to do an interview with him." And so we were like, going to do a video. Yeah, uh, we we're doing a video about this event, but um, we didn't think uh, we could catch uh, Bruce because he's such a busy person. But he did. He, he did. did. He, he was right in front of us, and we asked him if he could He's say like, a sure. few words. He said, "Sure." Perfect. We interviewed him, and we got the, a little bit of history of the of the uh, event, how he uh, planned it, and as well as uh, about the Doc Hudson car. So, um, yeah, between all the other stuff that Damon captured, it's going to be a good video of. Uh, we made it up Heart Attack Hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some someone asked me, said, "Were you entered into the hill climb?" I was like, "Yes," and it's a photo of me just walking up the hill. <laughs> But yeah, so that was pretty much the the end of the week, right? And um, you know, we're just giving you the highlights here. We have tons of content that we're going to share with you over the next couple of weeks. Um, I know it's we're getting long here, but uh, let's let's uh, get into a little bit of Porsche news. And um, this actually is related to Car Week because our our friends at Gunther Works unveiled their latest um, their latest initiative. Project this was the, uh, the turbo. Yeah, so, uh, so they were in Monterey, and yeah. if you're wondering why I showed up at the place for the uh, <laughs> Porsche photo work, uh, photo, the Porsche photo shoot where Gunther was, is because we were going to shoot that car. So maybe down the line we'll be able to do a video. No, definitely, definitely, and we we tried to make it happen, but things were, you know, so compressed in many ways. And uh, but I spoke to the folks Nick and uh, Nick Barnes and Peter Nam. They will definitely give PCA access to the vehicle, and we'll do an in-depth, deep dive yeah. interview with them. So, seven hundred horsepower. Seven hundred horsepower. Is. Yeah, and I don't know if there's do do we have the video of their speedster going up the corkscrew? Because uh, Patrick Long was driving that on Sunday, and that thing hustled. It yeah. was it flew up the yeah, corkscrew. Patrick Long's very competitive, so yeah. uh, he wasn't doing a demonstration ride. He had the thing on three wheels. Oh yeah, going up the. Uh, he wanted to win. Yeah, and that speedster it demonstrates how stiff that body is because you could see it pick up that uh, the front passenger right. front. Yeah. yeah. So what's this with the uh, nine six two on bring a trailer? Uh, so this was uh, I I think I read this on Rentless initially. And this guy had Oh, it's bought, just the nose. Yeah, remember? I think we talked about this yeah, at yeah, lunch yeah, or yeah, something yeah. where he found a, a 962 uh, nose yeah. off of Craigslist. Oh, yeah. man. And I was going to do a story on it because it contacted idol. me. But I my had idol. no time. But Whoa. it was gonna. he was just going to do it for his garage. And uh, basically, I think he didn't have the space after he saw the size of it. But he wanted to restore just the nose. And oh. so he found the uh, replacement headlights. He also did some detective work. Because it didn't look like that when he bought it. It was all white. Oh. But, he, but you could see some uh, decals from before. So he did some detective work and found out that it belonged to the uh, um, the Haviland team and uh, re recreated the way it's really erased. And now he uh, put it on Bring a Trailer to donate all the uh, proceeds to charity, which I thought was pretty cool. cool. Uh, so it's an incredible piece of wall art for anyone who wants part of a 962. So I kind of have a similar story. I don't know if Damien even knows this. Manny, you might know. So I found a 993, I think it's a cup car nose, but it's like, it's from, it's headlights and um, headlights and hood and top of the fenders, all it, one piece. Yeah, it's not a real piece. Uh, what's that from then? It's from some kit that uh, somebody sold. Oh. Porsche's uh, was, um, like her cup cars were actually Individual steel, pieces, uh, steel yeah, pieces, steel fenders, and uh, it could have been a carbon fiber hood, but it wasn't one piece. That's usually, yeah. yeah, no, I think and this still piece, makes a neat piece of uh, wall is. art. Well, it's yeah, I mean, it was like 50 bucks, I think, 
It's a big piece of fiberglass, and I couldn't pass you, it up. Is that in your attic now? Uh, it's in my garage. No, you, did you really buy it? Yeah, yeah, I bought oh it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so now I kind of I have to find some so sort of So you got the front livery. quarter of a car in your garage. Yeah. Where is it? You can't fit anything else in your garage. Uh, yeah, there's a way. <laughs> <laughs> moving on, moving on. What about this? Uh, what's this? Hydrogen? Auto evolution? I didn't click on that link. Who sent that link? Yeah, that just came out, uh, I think, like two days ago. It basically showing that, uh, uh, who knows, the internal combustion engine may not be dead after all. Mm. And yeah. Porsche is uh, still working on uh, on possible alternative fuel. Or hedging their bets, at least. It, yeah, it, hydrogen, you know, people will tell you that's uh, better for the environment than electricity, but there's a lot of caveats there. It's not uh, anywhere, anywhere near as... Uh, available as electricity is um in theory you know it's more uh efficient there are, there are a lot of hydrogen every, cars hydrogen, in california hydrogen I mean. is everywhere hydrogen stations for cars yes uh, you know that goes into your tank is very rare Don't like yeah. like buses and stuff run on hydrogen yeah well just, i mean cities yeah and i yeah. believe i remember back in the day maybe one of the military bases if you know you can get on there there's a i think the fuel mileage up. is about the same as gas mm -hmm. uh yeah. but um as opposed to long trips, if you're in big metropolitan area, uh, there's hydrogen refueling stations. It's a lot easier. Yeah. But if you start to go outside of the city, no luck. No, I heard a, a smoking tire podcast. I think Zach had a uh, maybe a Hyundai hydrogen. It was a pretty funny uh, uh, episode of him talking about uh, going to the one station between L.A. and San Francisco, uh -huh. and how long he had to wait, and it was having problems and. It was like a three or four hour wait to top off to be able to make it to uh, San Francisco where there was so more. even in even worse infrastructure than like electric charging stations. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's good if you uh that's why you see those buses that are hydrogen powered because they're all uh in, inside their own facilities where they mm -hmm. refill them at. So anyways, the fact that Porsche is doing this is very interesting. That's uh, yeah. maybe they're not all in for electricity. They're still uh looking at possible uh, you know, we know they're working on synthetic fuels, so uh with hydrogen power tells me that they're still keeping uh, uh, some options open. Yeah. All right, so let's move into we've got Sports Car Together Day uh, coming up next week. Yep. Then we have. And we found out, like I said, uh, Jeff Gordon is going to be yep. racing in a, uh, a career cup. He makes his return to uh, racing from his retirement. I think that's going to be very cool to see him racing a. Uh, a uh, career cup car because uh, Jeff Gordon is uh, he's a pure driver mm. he's just not a one-trick pony and he's you know we if YouTube but he switched uh, cars with uh, Juan Pablo Montoya um, and F1 when Juan was uh, doing the F1 uh, gig and uh, he did pretty good in the F1 car I've never driven one mm. so I, it'd be interesting to see how he does in the uh, in the 911s so by the time we release this this will be Monday next yeah. week right so if you're, so if, if you're Coming to Sports Car Together Fest, we still have opportunities for corral parking and parade laps. And those are, you want to park together with the Porsches, you got to do that. And then to be able to drive Indy for, I think it's... I'm not saying Roger Penske is going to be watching the parade laps, but you never know. <laughs> you never know. Somebody might be scouting. Uh, and then we have uh, Open House on September 10th, I believe. And we have probably... 300 cars or so that show at up at least yeah oh, and, uh, we have barbecue and we're giving away cruises again princess cruise is going to be here so um a lot of cool stuff going on and you get to see the podcast studio no one has you really take your picture where vu sits yeah right <laughs> uh let's see and then of course we already announced unstock and that is november 13th and i also got word that we will not be doing a full-on breakfast at the Eliotta show, but we will be doing a private preview for PCA members on uh, that Friday. So not a full breakfast, but we will so still have, have coffee. The, we will have coffee. All right. We will have coffee, and you know, 300 people that sign up will be able to walk through um, the Porsche exhibit early, uh, as as opposed to everyone else. You'll see the GT3 RS, but I will tell you there is another vehicle coming that uh, might cast a little bit of a shadow 
over the GT3 RS. So hopefully those of you out uh, in the LA area or those that you that might fly out to the LA Auto Show, uh, you'll enjoy that. The neat thing about it, the neat thing about the member uh, breakfast isn't the breakfast part. Yeah, it's the access and the fact that uh, they have most of these cars open, so you can look inside, sit in the car. Uh, because five minutes before this opens up to the public, they go around and they lock everything down. Lock it up. Um, so, just th that's worth the uh, entry fee alone, which I think is the same as a regular ticket. Mm -hmm. uh, but you get uh, uh, much greater access. You can talk to the product specialists because once the public's uh, let in, it is a pretty packed location. All right, as far as the videos that have been dropped, Damon. Well, we just talked about a, what's pretty much going to be the next week. Um, so 992 GT3 RS just dropped. We will have a mix of Sally Special, Works Reunion, um, Hill Climb, Cayenne Turbo GT, 718 Cayman OMR. We've got a whole ton of videos that it's almost tough to keep track of right now without There's my spreadsheet. It's it's a, it's good that you have all this in the hopper. Yep. I think we're going to be quite busy sharing all this uh, with you all. Mm -hmm. All right. So I hope you enjoy the extended version of the podcast. Uh, thanks for listening. If you aren't currently a PCA member and you own a Porsche, grab that VIN, go to PCA.org and uh, check us out. If you're looking to buy a Porsche, try out our test drive program. Remember to follow us on the podcast Instagram, behind the scenes photos, Porsche Club Insider, all one word. And of course, you can always send us an email at podcast at PCA.org. Please, if you enjoy the show, be sure to give us a, a, a solid rating. Would love to see your comments. We'll mention your name on the next recording. Until next time, stay safe, and we'll catch you down the road.